today on Heart of the Matter. This week, we set our sights on Jeff City and the race for Missouri governor, sitting down with the top Democrats on the ballot. The how is making sure that we're prioritizing those issues that matter most to folks and getting rid of the noise. House Minority Leader Crystal Quaid and businessman Mike Hamra. I think the state has a great opportunity and a, and a bright future. Uh, but we're also, you know, encumbered with a lot of challenges. Asking the candidates about crime, reproductive rights, government, and gridlock. Our special coverage starts now. From KNBC 9, Kansas City, this is Heart of the Matter. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Cody Holyoke. We are in full commitment 2024 mode here on Heart of the Matter. For the next two Sundays ahead of the primaries, we'll analyze the contentious race for Missouri governor, speaking to the candidates about the issues that matter to you. Today, it's all about the Democratic side of the ballot. Five candidates want your vote on August 6th, but the fight right now is really between two of them, and they're both from Springfield. Businessman and fast food CEO Mike Hamra and House Minority Leader Crystal Quaid. People say politics can be tough. I tell them I can handle it. Quay jumped into the race about a year ago, making the argument that she's tough enough to deal with the opposition in Jefferson City. Growing up in Springfield, she is the first person in her family to graduate from high school. After earning a degree at Missouri State, she spent some time staffing for Senator Claire McCaskill and was elected to the Missouri House in 2016. She's now termed out and can't run again. Quaid has had an uphill battle in Jeff City as minority leader, working to take on Republicans in an effort to restore abortion rights and improve gun control, among a number of other issues. There isn't a lot we can do when it comes to policy. We can get loud and we can draw attention to this, but it is absolutely about who we send to represent us in the state of Missouri. Quaid was one of many Democrats calling for stricter gun control measures after February's deadly parade day shooting here in Kansas City. Battling gridlock in a Republican-led General Assembly would be a big challenge for a Democratic governor. And that's where we start my conversation with the candidate today. You've been House Minority Leader for years now. You have seen the dysfunction that, that we've been watching in Jeff City. If you flip the governor's office blue, which hasn't happened in more than a decade, you're still going to be working with a lot of red. So how do you reach through the, the gridlock and try to get stuff done in Jeff City? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. Um, but yeah, that's the reality of the state of Missouri right now. And that's one of the reasons that I think I am best suited for this role, uh, because I have been the Democratic leader for the last six years in the House and been able to work across the aisle, not only passing good legislation, but finding places where we can stop bad things from happening, but building relationships with the Republican leadership over the years. And I will be able to continue that in the governor's office. How do you do that? What is the plan? Because you have those relationships, but even people who have relationships, it seems, Jeff City have had strained relationships as of late. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I will really lean into what I've always done. When I first ran in 2016, uh, becoming the only elected Democrat in the southern half of Missouri, I had my yard signs right next to Donald Trump yard signs in the exact same yard. And not necessarily because we agreed on everything. Obviously, we disagree on a lot. But all Missourians want access to education that is good for their kiddos. You know, everybody talks about the fact that our hospitals are closing and it's so hard to get access to an affordable doctor. Um, you know, all of these issues are that I hear the most about are nonpartisan. And so the how is making sure that we're prioritizing those issues that matter most to folks and getting rid of the noise. You know, we've seen so much of this partisan uh, back and forth, mainly because we have so many Republicans who are running against each other in these primaries. And so as governor, I'll really dig into the those issues that, that matter most to folks that aren't partisan. Trying to break through that is tough too, even just on a, a local level with, with people just, you know, living in Kansas City or, or another town in Missouri. Uh, just trying to have that conversation where it doesn't immediately go to a one side or, or, or the other. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in your, in your travels or across Missouri when it comes to uh, what's the most important issue to the voters that you're talking to? Yeah, you know, we're hearing everywhere a conversation around government overreach. And that, uh, brings into conversation the abortion initiative, of course, and having politicians in our doctor's offices, but also into our public school systems, our public libraries. You know, we have seen uh, folks in the legislature try to completely defund these library systems. And of course, healthcare is a conversation that we're hearing everywhere. Um, and again, those are sometimes partisan issues, but mainly just folks who want government out of their lives and want government to perform the duties that it's promised. You mentioned reproductive rights, which is front and center mm -hmm. uh, this year, especially looking to, to see the constitutional amendment on the ballot in November. Uh, you know, you have been pushing for uh, women's rights in Jeff City. Yeah. Haven't gotten a lot of traction because the, the makeup of the House and Senate, 
what will you do as governor to try to uh, further in, enshrine those rights? Even if this ballot petition initiative passes, mm -hmm. uh, we have seen, especially uh, over the border in Kansas, lawmakers still trying to further restrict abortions. Yeah, well, I would say as the only woman and only mother in this race, obviously this is deeply personal for me. Um, and yes, I've been in Jefferson City as they have continued to go after reproductive health care, and not just in abortion. We're hearing senators talk about IVF right now and how they don't think that that should be legally allowed. And so as governor, I will do everything in my power to uphold the will of voters, which we know in November they're going to uh, overturn this draconian ban and give rights back to uh, the citizens of Missouri. And so we'll make sure that the people's voices are heard. What are you looking at as far as a forecast in November if that uh, gets voters to the polls mm -hmm. as far as the, the makeup of the House and Senate? Would more Democrats be elected, do you think? Absolutely. We're going to break the Republican supermajorities in both the House and Senate this year. We are only three seats away in the House and two in the state Senate. So we know voters are going to come out and support us. But we also know Republicans are going to re retain control. Uh, it's going to be a very long time before Democrats are competitive in that space. And that, again, goes back to your first question of why it's so important to elect somebody who has those relationships and knows how to work across the aisle. What's issue number one for you? Like when, if you take the oath of office, you walk in, what's the first thing you do? You know, I like to talk about this, not just day one, it's going to take several days to accomplish the things that we want to do. But first and foremost is ensuring that the promises made to Missouri citizens through our state agencies and what services we're supposed to provide are adequate. I hear all the time about people who call into Medicaid and are on wait times for four plus hours. We have been dinged for so many of our services from foster care to putting folks who are in mental health crises in nursing homes most recently. And so day one, uh, the first you know 100 days, we'll be making sure that our agencies are providing the services that we promise. Here in Kansas City, public safety is top of mind. Uh, we have uh, a gun violence problem, to say the least. Uh, what do we do, what could you do as governor to try and, and help with that? You know, again, this goes back to understanding the makeup of where we are in Jefferson City and what it means to, to pass legislation here. But as Democratic leader, I have met with law enforcement officials all across the state countless times. And what we hear the most about is making sure that they are uh, provided what they need to be successful. That is making sure that we're fully staffed, that we're funding the trainings. Um, but I believe also in providing local control back for Kansas City, but also for all of our municipalities and, and local law enforcement to decide what works for their communities. What works for, you know, in, in Webster County, Missouri, where I grew up, is very different than what Kansas City's needs are. And so I think we should be entrusting these local leaders and law enforcement to, to help determine what those are. And that's been really interesting. We talk about the, the referendum that's coming up in August uh, for KCPD funding. It's a statewide mm -hmm. vote. Is it, That's sort of what you're talking about here, just trying to localize it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I don't think that somebody in Joplin, Missouri should be telling Kansas City what they should be doing uh, for their local communities and vice versa. I know folks in Joplin don't want Kansas City and St. Louis dictating what they do. And so I really believe in local control when it comes to this conversation. Next, we'll talk to Quaid's opponent in the primaries, businessman Mike Hamra, about his priorities as our Commitment 2024 coverage continues. Winner of the Kansas Association of Broadcasters Award for Best Recurring Program. You're watching Heart of the Matter on KNBC 9. We're back with a candidate hoping to use his business experience as governor in Missouri. Because with today's high cost, it's hard to get ahead. That's why I'm determined to give my workers a chance to build a better life. Democrat Mike Hamra runs Hamra Enterprises, a family business with more than 7,000 employees at restaurants and coffee stands in 11 states. He grew up in Springfield, where the business started. Hammer got his law degree from Mizzou, and as president and CEO, he's grown Hammer Enterprises from 26 restaurants to close to 200. Hammer is a political newcomer, having never held elected office before. And earlier on in his campaign, he batted back criticism of his out-of-state voting record. That's where we begin today. You've campaigned as an outsider in this race, and you know critics have said that's an understatement, pointing to voting records in, in Illinois showing you casting ballots in Chicago as recently as 2020. How can you assure voters in Missouri that you're invested in Missouri? Yeah, well, I was born and raised in Springfield, Missouri. I live here today uh, with my family in, in Springfield. Uh, but the truth of the matter is I wouldn't be in this race unless I qualified to run for governor in the state of Missouri. And, and uh, you know, and I care deeply about the state of Missouri. Uh, I've grown a family owned business from 26 locations to almost 200. We employ over 2000 people here in the state of Missouri. Uh, and I built many of the 50 locations that we have here in the state. 
building relationships with people in various communities throughout the state, uh, even beyond the 50 communities that we're in here today. So I care deeply about the state. Uh, I think the state has a great future and a bright future, and that's why I'm running for governor. Mm -hmm. Live here in Missouri and, yes. and have for the last decade, I think that's the yes. rule? That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've never held elected office before, but you arguably want the biggest office that Missouri has to offer. Uh, why should voters pick you? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, you know, I, I think the state has a great opportunity and a, and a bright future, uh, but we're also, you know, encumbered with a lot of challenges. Uh, people are still challenged with the trying to make ends meet in the state, and. Uh, that's frustrating as a Missourian to see and watch that. You know, for the last 22 years, uh, I've laid out a vision and grown a business working with people that I might not always agree with to build a great company uh, and being able to bring people together. Uh, and I know that's what Missouri needs right now. They need somebody who's willing to go to work with people, irrespective of their political affiliation, to try to move things forward and solve problems. And I'm someone who's relentless around solving problems. I won't stop until we solve problems and until we make progress uh, in our business, and I'll do the exact same thing for people in the state of Missouri. What's the biggest issue in Missouri right now, in your opinion? Yeah, the biggest issue that we have right now is the extreme abortion ban that we have. Uh, in place, uh, and I'm confident that we're gonna have that ballot initiative in November. I'm confident that we're gonna restore that right for women in the state of Missouri, but we're gonna need to have a Democratic governor to ensure we keep that right in place. You may still be up against a Republican-run House and Senate. How do you make that work, and how do you try to, to keep those rights in place? Obviously, if this abortion uh, amendment passes, it's enshrined in the Constitution. That hasn't stopped politicians in Kansas, let's say, from trying to put further restrictions on abortions. That's right. We're gonna we'll we'll work. Uh, I'll, like I said, I'm gonna work with anybody, and I'll work hard to make sure we keep those rights in place. And I'll work with our legislative body to do that. And in places where they've decided they're gonna just stonewall us in that effort, then we'll work to replace them. We'll work to find other candidates that will be elected to the House or the Senate that are gonna work with an executive branch uh, to try to bring change and bring progress to the state of Missouri. You know. It's not just good for women's rights in the state of Missouri to restore that, but it's also good for our future. You know, I talk to parents and grandparents every day that tell me their kids aren't willing to move back to the state of Missouri, and they're concerned about their grandchildren leaving the state of Missouri because of this extreme abortion ban. So it's impacting our economy, it's impacting our future and our ability to keep people here in the state of Missouri right now. You've discussed the need to stop the, the partisan food fighting, I think you said. Yes. Uh, how do you do that when historically there's just been gridlock constantly in Jeff City. As governor, how would you try to break that up? Yeah, you know, one of the reasons I'm running is because for the last 22 years, I have brought people together to solve problems, uh, to confront challenges, and I'm relentless about it. And I know that I'll do that same thing as governor. Uh, and if there is, is stonewalling, you know, the, the, the legislators decide, or there's people in the legislative body that decide to stonewall efforts to try to make progress in the state, then we'll bring those initiatives to the voters. We'll bring, the, we'll bring it back to the voters and let them make those decisions. There's a, an issue close to home in Kansas City, and that has to do with the state control of the police department here. Yes. We know there's a fight in St. Louis to maybe bring back state control. Do you support state control of local police departments? Well, first off, let me just say this. You know, the voters in these com in communities throughout the Missouri, they elect the mayors to make those decisions. They, they put elected officials in place to make decisions about what safety is going to look like, how they're going to manage uh, law enforcement agencies in those various communities. You know, I think it's disruptive for the state to be involved in Kansas City's decision making around law enforcement and how they're going to manage and govern their police force. We need to ensure that that is put back into the state, you know, back into Kansas City, back into the hands of the mayor and the people that, are, that have been elected as officials in Kansas City. They know their community best. The state does not know as much about what's happening in the, in the city of Kansas City as the people that are elected in that city. Would you support or lead an effort to bring local control back to Kansas City? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, we talk about gun violence all the time here in Kansas City, and, and we see that in St. Louis as well. Yes. It's, a, it's a major problem here, uh, a public health crisis, according to some health experts. What do you do to try and curb those numbers? Well, I think, you know, all majority of Missourians, including gun owners like myself, support stronger background checks. 
uh, as well as red flag laws here in the state of Missouri. It's not just good for the safety of people walking out on the streets, but it's also supporting our law enforcement agencies. So they're protected when they're walking into situations that they're not aware of. There may be a violent uh, you know, person in there that's, that has the right to own a gun. And that's something red flag laws would help our law enforcement agencies out with as well. How do you get that through the General Assembly, which yeah. is typically ultra conservative in some such, at least Republican led, you could say? Yeah, we'll work, I, I'll work with anybody in the General Assembly to like move that forward. And like I said, the majority of people in the state of Missouri, including gun owners, uh, want to see stronger background checks. They want to see the, the even conservative red flag laws put into the state of Missouri. We have to convince them to do that. And if they're unwilling to do that, then we will, again, bring that back to the voters in the state of Missouri through a ballot initiative. Watch my full interviews with both Crystal Quaid and my camera right now at KNBC.com slash politics. Our roundtable's here next. We're back with analysis from our roundtable of journalists, Brian Ellison, host contributor with KCUR, and KNBC 9 political reporter, Michael Mahoney. I uh, will start with you, Mahoney. What stood out to you about these candidates today? The veteran status of Crystal Quaid being in the legislature, being the minority leader in the, in the House for a, no, a number of years, versus Mike Hamra, who is a businessman, who has not had any uh, government experience and wants to come in on the uh, top job as uh, state's chief executive. Yeah, prided himself as being an outsider. We'll see if that translates at the polls. Well, and I think that that is the key difference between these candidates. You were hard pressed to find any real substantial policy differences between the two of them. I think they're going to sign the same legislation and veto the same legislation should they be elected governor. I think the real difference is what kind of leadership they've got experience offering. Crystal Quaid points to her legislative experience leading Democrats in a super minority building relationships across partisan lines. Mike Hamra may be able to do that but his leadership has happened primarily in the business arena where the people that he talks about finding solutions with or solving problems with are people who reported to him as the CEO for the most part. Uh, is that kind of leadership what the governor, the executive role needs, maybe? Or will it work in Jefferson City? I think that's the key question between these two candidates. Yeah, and pushes himself as somebody who would try to maybe go to the initiative petition which is an interesting strategy uh, if gridlock is just too much in Jeff City. He was talking in his interview, they had one line in there about if there is stonewalling, if there are reluctant uh, uh, politicians in the, in the state uh, government and the le legislature, there's no if, there are, especially with, with a, uh, a Democratic uh, governor. The last three sessions of the, uh, of the state Senate have been tied in gridlock almost from the get-go. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not if it is you even with you know a new house and new senate there is going to be uh, some things that you got to overcome as a governor you know, we look ahead to november of course abortion and reproductive rights i mean that is a temple issue for democrats uh, with this constitutional amendment likely on the ballot will that help democrats in november i think undoubtedly it helps democrats but does it help them enough i think in order for any democrat to win including either of these two choices uh, it's going to take three things happening first there's going to have to be an extraordinarily strong performance by that democratic candidate. Second, there's going to have to be uh, an extremely weak performance by a Republican. Uh, and, and I cer certainly think there are some Republicans that the Democrats would rather face than others. Uh, but I think the third factor, Cody, is to be honest, it's going to take some sort of X factor, some unexpected development, something like the Todd Aiken moment against Claire McCaskill some years ago. Otherwise, even the strongest Democrat versus the weakest Republican is still an uphill battle in this state. Yeah, whoever wins the uh, Democratic nomination is going to have to win, run a perfect campaign and uh, have uh, bank on something unexpected, some X factor, like uh, like Brian, uh, Brian sa said. It's an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, uh, with a little bit more than a week ago to the election, how do you see this shaking out for Democrats? Uh, I think uh, Crystal uh, Quaid has the inside track. Just this uh, past week, she picked up uh, the key endorsements from Quentin Lucas, uh, mayor here in Kansas City, and Tashara Jones, the mayor of uh, St. Louis. Those are the bases of the Democratic Party in the state of Missouri. That will help her uh, uh, a lot, and uh, I, think she, I think she wins. Right. I, I think that's probably right. Right. My camera uh, brings uh, sort of the outside funding, kind of the Trudy Bush Valentine factor, though, and she did beat Lucas Kuntz in the, the U.S. Senate race uh, two years ago. Uh, I think there is some possibility that either candidate could pull this out, but I do think Crystal Quaid has the inside edge. All right, we'll see what happens. Brian Ellison, Michael Mahoney, thank you very much. Count on KNBC 9 News and Heart of the Matter for your commitment 2024 coverage on air and online at KNBC.com. We're back after this.
Our special commitment 2024 coverage continues next week with a look at the Republican side of the Missouri governor's race. I'll sit down with the three leading primary contenders right now. Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe, Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft, and State Senator Bill Eigel discussing the issues important to you so you can make an informed decision before Election Day. Thanks so much for joining us this week. I'm Cody Holyoke. We'll get to the heart of those conversations when we see each other again next Sunday. Have a great day.